will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So let's worship today. And we can do that by being here. Let's stand. Sunday, we're going to have a Sunday school auction and a potluck to uh, raise the money for uh, some of our kids going out to Echo Ranch. And um, so if you have something to bring, Kelly, you want to say something more on that? Um, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Okay. Um, if you have not brought donations in and you would like to, you can do that this week. The church will be open. You can talk to either Pastor or Melinda about maybe dropping something off. And if you'd like to sign up for a dessert, um, that can just be brought next Sunday for the auction. Very good. So we'll have a Sunday school auction next week. And then we probably, I don't think we're having an evening service then. So there's no evening service next Sunday. Okay, we're talking about the uh, Bagel Bottle com campaign. And I think we have a, a video for that. And Connor, can you uh, put that up for us, please? I'm a volunteer at Juno Pregnancy Resource Center. Here at the Resource Center, we offer a variety of resources to help people. We have pregnancy testing, peer counseling, hundreds of educational classes. We have a maternity store, a baby boutique, and a baby equipment room. Our goal, our ministry, is to offer help for today and hope for tomorrow. Babies are a blessing. We all know that. But babies can also be expensive. So we appreciate you partnering with us to help fund the different services that we have at the center. This baby bottle campaign runs between Mother's Day and Father's Day. So between those dates, sometimes you can pick up these bottles at your church. They can be filled with cash or checks or coins. There's also a QR code on the side where you can give via Venmo or PayPal. 
You might also see larger beta bottles at other places where, again, you have the codes that you can scan or, of course, you can put money in there as well. In addition to the baby bottle campaign that, again, runs from Mother's Day to Father's Day, we would also love if you would consider partnering with us to become a monthly giver. Those kinds of monthly gifts help us to balance out our funding throughout the year so that we can predict our income month to month. So we're grateful for that. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's the General Pregnancy Resource Center. I don't know if a lot of people do know that. We do sponsor them and give them a monthly contribution to uh, the church here through the Missions Council. So that's one of the things. And the baby bottles, I still, I saw there was a couple more back there on the uh, on the table as you're heading out the door on the left there. So if that's something you're interested, that would be great. So let's, um, let's uh, say a quick word of prayer here. Thanks, God, for our, our time here. Thank you for bringing each one to uh, gather here to church and to uh, meet up with you to pray for you. <coughs> pray now we be in the, the rest of the service be with Pastor Fred as he uh, shares shares with us the words that you put on his heart to uh, help us draw closer to you. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, is that mine? I have a small amount announcement I'd just like to make real quick. Is okay. that okay? Sure. Um, yeah, I'm moving out of where I live at, my apartment, by the end of the month, but I'm looking for an extra room, a guest house or an extra room. If anybody has an extra room they'd like to rent out for $800 a month, I have that much to spend per month. So I just thought, just in case anybody has an extra room they're not using, I could give them some finance to, you know, help pay the mortgage or, you know, take care of the needs of the family. And uh, I, I don't sleep very much, and I'm not at home very often. I'm usually away all day long to other places, and I'm only at home during the night hours. So, and I wouldn't, so I wouldn't be involved in much activity in the house besides room, if there is one. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. You know, Delton, you were talking about um, the camp scholarships, and I was just thinking it was at a camp that your life changed. And... Sometimes we forget, we just think, oh, you know, but it's important. Lives get changed, and we can have a part in that. It's good to have Freddie back on the guitar. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> on page 713, if you want to look in your hymnal, some people like to do that for altos, tenor parts. Um, rescue the perishing. I was thinking about that as um, today's Pentecost Sunday, and if you were hoping to sing the Pentecostal power or um, this is in lieu of that, pastors, I don't know if you've noticed the message title um, Pentecost, not sent, not sit in, but sent out. So Catch these words as we sing them this morning in, in light of the message I hope Holy Spirit moves.
every day. It's not an easy path, but we've got to stay on it. And we need to help each other. Would you stand as um, we prepare our hearts for prayer? The altar is open if you want to come. <clears throat> Psalm 80. 
6.11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. stuff that's going on in our lives. God hears. I love that. My mind always, when I think about the struggles and things that are going on, my mind goes to Matthew chapter 11, verse 20, the, the, in, basically from 28 on. <clears throat> Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I'm glad he's with us, and that he wants to help us in all kinds of situations. And this morning, I know there are a lot of things that we're all dealing with, a lot of things that are going on. And so, 
Let's just lift them to the Lord and ask him for his help. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for one that you sent your son to come and show us the way back to you, who made it possible for us to come into your presence right now. And you know us all. You know what's going on. You have walked with us as we've heard things from the doctors, as we've heard things from our friends, as life has just happened. Thank you that you care and you know us. You know us by name and you know exactly what's going on. Thank you, God. And so we give you ourselves. And we ask that you would just help us to see and allow you to come and take care of the things. Lord, help us to <laughs> let you be part of our lives by joining you, by being yoked with you, who will take care of things and help us and guide us in the right ways. We have all been damaged by sin. We have all sinned and we have all made a mess of things from time to time, if not all the time, it seems. But you are the one who changes things. You are the one who is walking with us and helping us. Thank you that you love us and you call us to you. And you say, come, learn. And you teach. And you gently lead us. Because we let you have control. Lord, I know that too, there are things that happen when we say no to you. And you let us deal with the consequences, just like a good parent would. Lord Jesus, help us. Help us to know that you are gentle and loving and caring. That you want us to be in relationship. Help us to give up our struggle and, and just trust you. Thank you. Most of all, Lord, that we can do that. In this day, in this time right now, we can say, Lord, it's yours. I put myself in your hands. The Lord Jesus, I take control off of my own life. And I say, teach me. Help me to see how I need to be for you. Lord, for all of us, help us to come to the place where we just let go and turn to you and learn from you. Thank you for this morning, for this time of prayer, for this time of calling out to you, sharing with you all kinds of things. You are with us. And we thank you for that. Help us to be obedient. In your name I pray. God's people said, Amen. You may be seated.
sometimes it's good to just take a deep breath. One of the things that, if you've been paying attention to the news, there's been a whole lot of sort of unrest in cities and all campuses and all kinds of things where there have been things called sit-ins. Funny thing is, is that's not how a lot of protests were done in the past. It really was something new that um, a man named Gandhi had actually learned not so much um, from just doing it, but also had learned a bit of this because he got the impression that's how Jesus would do things and not be um, caught up in all kinds of stuff, and they would be peaceful. Unfortunately, sit-ins have sort of not become just sit-ins quiet. Um, <laughs> but what's interesting is that it is important to be upset about injustices that happen. And so I understand when injustice happens, and, and especially when I was young, I, I don't know if I probably actually became part of one. I, it's sort of vague in my, my <laughs> recollection, probably some of it for various other reasons. But I remember it was easy to sit. It truly was easy to sit and say, something's wrong. But I remember somebody then pointing out something more important. Doing something about it. <laughs> it's one thing to go and say, this is all wrong. It's another. And parents, I could see some of the parents going, uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, yep. And with the kids, you know, it's one thing to say, that's not fair, mom and dad. And then not have a solution. What would you do? What would you do? If this is true, then what? We don't like that part. Honestly, I don't 100%. I, I got to go do something about it. I think it's wrong. So uh, come up with a solution. I remember that was one of the things my boss would say to me. So it's not right. What's your solution? And if I didn't have one, he said then, be quiet. Ooh. I didn't like that either. <laughs> but that's an important thing for us to catch, especially as we see Pentecost, as the Holy Spirit comes in them. They didn't just have Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. They were now empowered to not just say, I have the power, but I have have the power to make a difference in the world. I have been given an ability to go and make a difference in the lives of others. It is more than just saying, Lord, something needs to happen. It's another to say, Lord, use me to make it Throughout scripture, we see that over and over again. The greatest one is, is good old Isaiah as he's there in the temple and he's been worried. He's, a, he's been already a prophet, been saying things. God has said things to him and, and used him. You know, come on, people, let's reason together. He's, he's had all of that. But then he sees the Lord and all of a sudden, the world changes. Because now he realizes he's a person who lives with others who like himself really is unclean and there's something missing and he needs to do something about it. So therefore he goes and he says, Lord, I'm unclean. And God comes and touches him. And then he starts able to share but even before that, all of a sudden, he starts hearing a voice. And it's a voice that's not just specifically to him. He says, who will go for me? It's a voice that God has been saying all along. Who will go forward? Who will do something? And he says, here am I, Lord. Send me. It's being sent out. It's being part of that. 
I want us to hear what took place. We all know about the fire coming down and we hear about the wind, the mighty wind and so forth. We can understand, we can picture this. And even last year, we, or if you, if you need a modern day, just if you need to see this right away, go down to the docks, not docks, down to the, um, the cruise ships. And just listen for a little bit. You will hear the multiple languages. You will hear God speaking. He is speaking, by the way, in many of those people. They may not even be aware of it. God is moving. He is doing a mighty work. But let's hear not so much about Peter's sermon, which is great. I love it. But let's see what happened because they were filled. We're going to jump all the way down to the uh, 42nd verse of chapter 2, the book of Acts. So if you turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we'll start reading there. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. Father, use these words in each of our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I love this passage. I love it because there's some things that are characteristics that I want to be more characteristics of my life. The first characteristic we saw in this passage was devotion to the teachings of the apostles. Um, there's, a, there's an actual phrase out there, didache, or didache, well, however you want to say it. There's all kinds of right and wrong ways of saying it. And I realize for my Greek professors who might be out there in the crowd somewhere, um, and I, I know a couple of them who might be hearing me maybe in heaven, forgive me. If I butchered that. But this idea of the teachings, they devoted themselves. And that devotion is such that I am giving my full attention. There's about 3,000 people who had come and joined the church from, Paul, from Peter's great um, sermon. We don't know exactly when this takes place, but it's days. And they started just gathering. And they would, they would gather in the temple courts. And they just listen. And then they would gather in people's homes. And they would share with one another what they've been hearing. And I love this idea of that they were devoted. Devoted to the teachings of the apostles. But it's more than that. In fact, what's interesting, there are... In, in, this, in, the, in the original language, in, in what's trying to be said is that there's two pairs. They were not just part listening to the apostles. They were also gathered together. They were talking amongst themselves. They were enjoying times of fellowship. That tends to be just a church word, but it's basically time of getting together. And they were talking about what they've been learning. That's what it was all about. And they did this. It's interesting. There's a phrase that's throughout this whole passage. Every, every day, anytime they could. I mean, it was just constant. This was what they did. They heard what was being said by those who were in authority. What God had said through people were already sent out. They were hearing those things. And then they were talking amongst themselves. They were sharing and Part of that sharing at times was, we'll talk about it, is eating. But not only that, they were also probably having some fun. You know, they, when you 
in fact, it says in the Old Testament, when you sit and when you rise, talk about these things. This is how they were. They were just enjoying time together and they would just chat about it. They enjoyed that. But then, uh, the second pair is that of breaking bread together. That's one part of it. In breaking bread, we, we, we think of communion, but also it's eating together. They got together, maybe not every day, but often they would get together with one another. You've had some friends like that, right? That you talk to pretty much every other day or every day if you can, or if you've been away, as I've been away from some of my good friends back in Kansas City, I'll talk to them about once a month or so. Some of them I'll get a chance here in a couple of weeks to see them again and, and see them in person. And you know those friends, right? That it doesn't matter how long it's been, you know. I love that. And the important part was they were breaking bread together. They were enjoying time together. And not just to talk about stuff, but just shooting the breeze. Just having fun, going for walks, doing all kinds of things together. And then the, this, is, this idea was also paired with something else, and that is they pray together. Okay, they broke bread, meaning, yes, the Lord's Supper. Whenever you gather together, do this in remembrance of me, Jesus had told them. So they broke bread whenever they could, in that way, but then they ate together, and then in the midst of that, they realized, hey, did you know about this? Hey, let's pray. Let's ask God what would he want us to do. So powerful. Four characteristics of the early church that I want to see more in my own life. But how does it work? How do we do this? Because, for one, we can't hear exactly from the apostles. They have gone on. They're no longer here on earth. But we do have his word. And we can spend time here in his word. We can hear what he's having to say to us. And I'm going to say a, a, a bad word in many people's minds today. Because I understand it. But it's called doctrine. There are things that we believe. Doctrine is but what we believe. And hear this. Theology is very simple. Some people make it really more complex than it should be. Theology is you and I, together with God, trying to figure out him. We, God's people, trying to figure out not separate. Not separate. But together, to figure out who is this God who's called us? Why would he call us? That's doctrine. That's how we come together. And they came together because they wanted to. And it was with the Holy Spirit's strength that they could then be united. What's interesting in this whole passage, they were united. They saw together. Oh, that's not to say they didn't have various opinions. But they had no problem sharing with one another. And they didn't take offense. <laughs> wow, I'd like to see that. But I think there probably was. I'll be honest with you, there probably was a little bit of dissension. Hey, that's not what I remember. But that was them working together to try to understand the infinite God. <clears throat> That's so important for us. Now, it's not to disclaim the, the work of people who are truly theo theological, who spend their time there. It's not to make light of that. No, it's us together, all of us. When we as God's people come together and work together, that God can then speak and let him speak. Let him help us understand. See, it is when... 
we see God with our whole beings and we work together as people, then unity comes. It cannot come otherwise. It has to be of God and us seeking God. And so if you feel like you're not unified with fellow believers, with other people, then guess what? The problem is where? <laughs> I don't like that. Ouch. Maybe I'm not seeking God. And maybe they aren't either, but that's not the crucial part. Am I seeking God with all my heart? Am I allowing him to be there? <laughs> well, we also, <laughs> ah, this one's gonna, this one's, when I read it and I was letting God speak, it's one that I was, I was going, I don't do this. And I don't know how to do this. So I, I can't give you an exact way it's done. But hear these words, because I think it's important for us to catch. We need to see eating as a holy activity and what we do with each other and that we do it with each other as often as we can. We need to spend time together. We do. We have got to spend time together and we, especially eating, and see the time when we eat. No, it's not just to say, okay, Lord bless this food or our body. No, it's to see that when we are eating with other people, it's a holy time. This is a time that we just, for one, when we sit down and eat, any of us, we just start talking. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah, it's like something gets loose and we just share what's going on in our minds and our hearts. Eating together is so very valuable. We got to see it that way. I don't know how it's done yet. I'm just going there. But here's the other part that it, how it, this stuff goes together. We need to see prayer as a continual, continual, a continual, continual way to be part of our lives. It says in the scripture, the Apostle Paul says, pray continually. One of the easiest phrases in Greek to actually translate, it's just pray continually. Pray. <coughs> pray. Continually. Just do it. It doesn't tell you how. Just says do it. Anybody just ever anybody here totally be able to block out everything coming in your mind? I can't. There's constantly thoughts. If I said purple. You got the right color. Very good. If I said elephant. <laughs> it, and the thing is there's thoughts in our minds constantly we can all pray we just say God help God hey hey what's going on just all kinds of stuff it is not just by ourselves it's with one another as we spend time together as we eat, as we do various things, we can truly say, God, hey, this is what's going on. And then we also share with one another, hey, this is what's going on. I need help here. Not, not so much for us to sh gossip. It's not gossip time. It's time of saying, God, you know my brother and sister. You know what we're going through. God. And we share and we pray together. Important things. So. <laughs> so what should we do? First and foremost, foremost. And it's not to try to. This is not to beat anybody up. Okay. Because I've heard this verse used often. 
as a way to beat people up. And that is, don't neglect meeting together. And it's not so much because we need to have, forgive the phrase, butts in the seat. You know, so we can have great attendance or whatever. No. 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 It's not about that. It's, hey, I want to get together with my friends. I am looking forward to seeing a good friend when I go to Kansas City. His name is Alex. I went last year for his ordination. We have been friends for about... Mm, 11, 12 years now. It's been a joy to see him. And he's seen it in me. We have worked together through so many different things. I am longing for that time. And I miss it. And how often do I miss being with others? Oh, and, and hear me. We may not be able to meet with everybody all the time. I'm not talking about big crowd. I'm talking about with the various people. Understand, there were 3,000 people. They didn't know each other by name. Sorry. And some people are going to be with fewer than others. As a military brat, I learned to probably have more friends than most people did. But I know that the average person can have between 5 and 15 friends. There's some who, get, who go way overboard. They, they know almost everybody in town. And then there's others who know two or three people in town. Get together. And at times, maybe expand. Did you see that person who sat all by themselves? Maybe go just say, hey, mind if I sit with you? If they say no, I then sit with them. If they say yes, move someplace else. Don't take offense. Don't do anything. Just because maybe they're waiting for somebody. Maybe they just want to be by themselves. Whatever. But we can ask. We can talk. And we can be with one another. The reason for this, more than anything else, is that we need each other to be encouraged. I don't know about you, but I need encouragement. I, the, the, encouragement helps me. And I think that most people truly just want to be encouraged. They get down. They wonder what's going on in life. And I know this. If you're discouraged, you know the best way to be encouraged? Go encourage somebody. Go see something good about somebody else. Go do something for somebody else. Encourage them because then in that you will feel encouraged most of the time. I, I will say there are times it doesn't. But the best part is it keeps me on the right path. And it keeps all of us on the right path when we do these things. Because that sometimes, and I'll say it's not just, see, encouragement is sometimes coming alongside and I just mentioned my friend Alex. Alex occasionally has had to say, Fred, that's bad, thank you. <clears throat> now, if even sometimes Donna would say that, I, what do you say? That's not right, I take offense. But because Alex and I have been through so much, he could say things to me. Ooh, I need a death. Thank you. So that's one of the things we can do. We can be together with our church family, with those who are other believers. And understand, yes, us here today, but also with other Christians that we know who are part of our lives. We can do that with them. But we need to also just keep seeking God. Together and privately. Privately because we need to make sure that we're talking with God, that we're having that one-on-one -on -one with him. And by the way, it's not just blah, 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 blah. It's also listening. What was that, God? Huh? Really? I've had many people who said when Joanne was here to do revival last month, said, you know, it was really cool when she said, 
What was that God? And it was sincere. She is trying to really say, God, what do you want to say? How are you saying these things? Why? What? Okay. Okay, God. So it's good to do that. But also, let's eat with each other. Now, it's more than just eating. It's also going and playing. Um, one of the things I love, I, I get a great joy of seeing uh, three kids most, most days that I'm in the office. Especially one little boy. I really like Michael. And uh, I love playing with him. I just love getting down at his level and just playing. And right now, it is such a joy. It really is because I don't have a son. At least not a son I can, I can talk to him on the phone. And they were not going to do it very often with me. But that's play ball. Right now, he loves tossing the ball with me. And it's like, oh, yeah. And it's fun to see him trying to catch, learning all that, and helping you know, it's one of those things. You understand that. It's, it's, it's having fun together. And when we do that, we build bonds. I'm hearing things about that there used to be a softball team, parents' church, and other things. You know what? Those are, those are some of the best bonds. I remember some of the softball teams I played on. I love that. The bonds. And quite honestly, sometimes, yeah. I took out the second baseman in slow pitch softball. Why? Because they were in my way. It's a game, Fred. It's a game. Not to me. But we learned with each other, right? We did things together. It's okay. However we do it, whether it's with one or two or it's 15 to 30. Let's do life together. Let's enjoy the time we have together. And let's involve people that we might not think would enjoy. Let's invite. Let's have friends. Let's reach out. If there's somebody who would like to play, Invite them to come play. They may not be any good. I was thankful people let me play. It wasn't until I got into college that I could finally hit the ball and catch the ball really well. Um, but you know what? God is with us and helping us. And I'm thankful for those people who took me aside and brought me along. How about you? One last thing to do. Let's look at the last slide. Because it's important. We started with begin with prayer and listen. We did that last week. I hope you had a chance to do that. To just pray for others and listen. And that you did nothing else unless really God pushed you there. But that you prayed and that you listened. I tried desperately to listen and not try to control conversations. But the third one is where I want us to spend our time this week thinking. At least once, if you can, go eat out with somebody. Maybe today. I think there's probably going to be a the lunch crowd go out. <laughs> but when you're out and you're eating, if you see somebody, ask them to join you. Eat with each other. Go spend some time just having fun. Now, mind you, remember, it's not just about eating. It's being together. Not church, not all kinds of other things, but just sharing life with each other. Let's do that this week. Let's enjoy our time together. Let's learn what it means to be together, to learn to be a blessing to others. Let's pray.
<clears throat> Father God, thank you for the example that we had, that we have in what happened in your early church. I don't want to just sit around. I want to be sent out. I want to see that my life makes a difference. And Lord, I know there are days that I feel like it's meaningless. But you don't. That when I am willing to pray for others, and when I learn to listen to you and to others, and then Lord, as I begin to interact in, in eating and fun ways, you are using me to be a blessing. Thank you, Father, for this time together. Thank you for how you're teaching us. Help us as we go from this place to be a blessing to all that we come in contact with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in the power of the Spirit and be a blessing to all that you meet.